Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. Today we're going to be talking about chainsaw oils. We're going to be talking about older saws. We're not going to be talking about new ones because that's a whole different thing. But to get lots of people asking what's the proper ratio of oil to use in my older saw. And unfortunately there's no simple answer to that because there's lots of different ways that you use your saws. Like with me, my vintage saws with the 1970s and 80s, I use them all the time. Well, like I say, people say, what should I use? and What type of oil should I use? And what's the proper mix? Well, the variables are how much you're going to use the saw, and how, what the temperature outside is. And the best place to look on the old saws for that is a chainsaw forum. I'll put a link to that. And he's put together a fantastic site that shows all the different models and brands of saws there. In there it tells what type of oil mix to use for the different years and models. And so an early saw like this one, about in 1948, um, they used 12 to 1 and they didn't have two-stroke oil then, it was just regular motor oil. It wasn't too awfully long until they started coming out with oil specific four chains on two cycle engines and McCullough's one of the companies that uh, was at the forefront of helping develop that. So shortly after this they went to 16 to 1 and then in the 50s they went to 20 to 1 and in the later years they went clear up to 40 to 1. And that's what they used on their saws till the end of production in 1999. Now the commercial saws I always ran at 20 to 1 but the thing is the oil was better than most anything else on the market and so if you used regular other brands especially the cheap stuff, your saw wouldn't last as wear out carbon up and fail. So it was very important to use the, the good stuff in them. And each manufacturer, a lot of them made their own, or had oils made for them that had special stuff in them. So in a saw like this, where, you know, 12 to 16 to 1, if I were using it, which is for play, I mean, I'm not going to be out cutting lots of wood with it and stuff like that, I'll actually run about 20 to 1 in it. And the oil that I use is this stuff here. It's Bardol VBA, which was made in Seattle. And it's a partial synthetic. And you don't want to use full synthetics in these old saws, and I'll talk more about that later in the video, even though there's a number of YouTube sites that supposedly commercial saw repair shops and stuff say, oh yeah, you can use that. Yeah, and you can, but if you're going to go out and do some serious cutting, so anyway, there's a reason to use the older type stuff. Now this can here would have been a very early two-stroke mix. And that would have been probably about a 20 to 1 ratio at that time. And McCullough eventually, like I say, went to 40 to 1. Like so. And these are all 40 to 1. Now, I, even though I used to use McCullough oil when I could get it, I never really ever ran them at 40 to 1. I always ran them, mid-sized saws and up, I always ran them at 32 to 1. And the small saws I run at 20 to 1. And they're again using really good oils and I didn't have any carbon problems and I didn't have any mechanical problems with them either. Most of them are still on the job after all these years. So anyway, we will come back here with another saw and talk about oil some more. Okay, well this is a saw I use lots, a little Mini Mac 35. And I have a couple other later versions of it that I use also. And they said you could use 40 to 1. And the thing is when I use 40 to 1, especially in warm weather, Saw starts losing power and stuff, and, you know, it's almost initially trying to seize. I always run them at 20 to 1. And my most used saws are the 60cc Pro Max 610 and 650s McCulloch's. And I run these at 32 to 1 because they run a 24 inch bar on them. And I work them pretty hard. They've done tons and tons of work. But, uh, you know, using a good oil, maintaining them properly, I've never had to rebuild any of them. i got about half a dozen of them. 
and they just run and run and run. This is a 78 model. I bought it in 1980. So all these years it's just been cutting away. I'll be right back. Okay, well here we have a 1952 Super Pioneer. It's 80.5 cc. And originally it used 12 to 1 oil mix and there again it was just mineral oil. This saw uh, was a really good runner and cuts really good. It's got a great big chain on it. And I run it at 20 to 1. So there again, each saw is going to have to have a different mix and, and depending on what you're doing with it, this is always just for play. Take it to the shows and run it or things like that, but it's never out doing a serious amount of work for me. And so I run this at 20 to 1. And then... This is another little saw that I use, a little Pioneer P20. And Richie said it's 16 to 1, and over the production time of it, they went up to 32 to 1. But um, I always run it at 20 to 1 because it's a hard-working little saw. And there again, if you run it in the warm weather with a thin oil mix in it, they smell hot and the performance drops off. So. Now this saw... Uh, P50 or 51 series like this one. The original one came out in 1974 and when Pioneer went out of business in 1983 it merged with Partner from Sweden and became Pioneer Partner and they trundled along for a number of years and that failed and so uh, Poland actually bought the designs and phased out all the small saws that Pioneer made and they kept these big saws and so these saws were in production for 18 years. And the interesting thing on the early one, the P50 for instance, says 16 to 1 on it and that's when they still had good oils and then in a couple of years later production they said 24 to 1 and then over the years um, the different manufacturers of it went clear up to 40 to 1 and so but the P50 that I use it's 82 cc and I run a big bar 27 inch bar on it I use it for really heavy duty cutting and uh, I run it at 20 to 1 because it says right on it 16 to 1, but it's smoky and doesn't run that good. But 20 to 1, it runs great. And there again, I, every year when I service them, I take them apart, check the clutch and different things, lube it, check for carbon, no carbon. There again, using Bardal VBA and all of this stuff. So anyway, we'll be back with another saw here. Okay, well, here's a mid 50s home light. And they. Originally ran 10 to 1 on this saw. There again, just mineral oil. And as time progressed, they got clear up to 32 to 1. Here's some of the cans of the oil. And one thing that's interesting, one of them is 30 weight and the other is 40 weight. There again, like I say, the early saws need a thick oil. You can't run the real thin oils. Now, that if you have a modern oil that says TCW 1, 2, or 3, it's made for outboard motors and it's very thin and it can be real detrimental to these old saws. It just blows past the rings and they don't lubricate with it. But Anyway, when they evolved into the more modern saws like this XL12, uh, they're, they use 32 to 1 and they're again with their oils, but if you use other brands, cheapo stuff from the hardware store, 20 to 1. So they knew that, if one, well, there several things that they did. One, they wanted you to buy the oil from them, but they also wanted you to have a good experience owning the saw. So using their products and that brand of saw was a win-win for them because they made money on both ends. So we'll move on. Well, here we have another brand of saw. It's a Remington, made by the Remington Firearms Company. Ritchie was a mall. They bought the company out. And interesting thing on these, the real early saws used 12 to 1. There again, mineral oil. But when they got into the later saws like this in the 60s, you know, they came out with their own oil like this. But they always stayed at 16 to 1. So. I don't think they had any partial synthetic oil. I think it was just mineral oil with a bunch of additives in it. But these were a real well-made little saw. They're almost a 100% copy of a Homelite XL12. 
But anyway, there again, the company's using the oil would try to make you buy both things to keep keep you as a customer. Worked pretty good. Be back. Okay, well, here we have a Brand X, uh, our favorite mono. I don't know if they ever sold oil with their name on it or not. I've never seen any anywhere. But these use a Power Products engine. This is the H47, 4.7 cubic inch or 77 cc. And these, they would build them up to a standard or down to a price. And so if you bought a top of the line one, had ball bearings on the crank and had needle bearings on the connecting rod, but on the cheapo ones, they used bushings for the crankshaft bearings and the connecting rod was actually just an aluminum connecting rod or sometimes brass that ran right on the crank. And so these saws, you always had to run at 16 to 1. Now if I run these at a show or something like that and do an occasional run, I'll run them at 20 to 1. But if you run them a bushing engine like that with uh, thin oil in it, it's going to blow up on you. So anyway, that's why we use the different things. Now, this little Dynamark, which is a, basically a Lombard, this is made in the late 60s, early 70s. And it's a real high performance little saw. I was amazed at how powerful it is, even with a quarter inch chain. But right on there it says 16 to one. And so there again, I would run at 20 to one. But anyway, Let's talk about the different oils here a little bit. Okay, well there again, uh, for the speci specific era of saw, you need different types of oil. So in an early saw, you use basically a mostly mineral oil. Later McCulloch, you'd use a partial synthetic like they had till the end. And the Bardo, like I've been using in all my stuff for years and years, uh, they don't make two-stroke oil anymore. But uh, for the U.S. anyway, they still sell it in Europe, but it's full synthetic. And then here's actually some of the last full synthetic stuff that they produced for the U.S. Now the other oil that I used to use my saws and stuff was Evinrude outboard oil. And it was actually Bardol who made it for them, so it was the same stuff. And so I like this early Bardol can, it says outboard motor oil on it. But right down below it says for lawnmowers and chainsaws, and it's a real heavy, thick oil. It's probably 50 weight. So collecting these old cans is just a side to the hobby of collecting old saws, just a lot of neat stuff. Be right back. Well, here's just a little overview of the different cans of oil. That's an early Pioneer, late Pioneer, Remington, early home light, later home light, and here's some Sears oil for the David Bradley saws. So, there's some more. There are a lot of companies made stuff. This is called Blue Bay. Lawnmower, chainsaw, and two cycle motor oil. There again, it's a really thick, heavy oil can for a little bit of can, weighs a lot. It's got really neat graphics. It's a lot of fun to collect stuff like this. Here's another one that I'll talk about modern oils a little bit here, but you can see this Lawn Boy oil here for the lawnmowers. It says right on there, ashless oil. And so we're going to talk about that when I start talking about the modern oils. Now this is another oil I used a lot, but it hasn't been available forever. And I use this in my really, really old antique outboard motors. I have, the oldest one I have is made in 1912, and uh, the other one I run quite a bit still is made in 1914. This is really thick 40 weight stuff and really lubricates well, but like I say, it's not available anymore. And then here's a modern Evinrude oil. It's 50 to 1. That's what they use on the outboards for years and years. And one thing that's interesting on that, in the 60s, you know, there was concerns about oil polluting the waters and stuff from outboard motors, and so the company started working on what they could do, and McCulloch and Johnson and Evinrude actually came out with motors that would run a hundred to one oil mix only if you ran their oils and so that was actually why McCullough went out of the outboard business was that people would buy the motors and they were hot rod motors, the big ones and they'd run a cheap oil in them and blow them up and want them fixed under warranty and so 
McCullough had a small portion of the outboard market, so they just shut down outboard production altogether. And here's another one that's kind of interesting. It says Evernood Lubricant 50 to 1 Rotary. That's for rotary engine snowmobiles. Wankel engine, which I actually have one. And this had a special formulation of more zinc in it to protect the rotor tips than the regular outboard oil. So, there again, there was lots of variations on oils over the years, and your best bet is if you had a certain brand of mower, chainsaw, or outboard and stuff to stick with their oils because you know you knew they were good. So anyway, be right back. Well, one thing I want to talk briefly about is why not to use full synthetic oils and old saws, especially like this one where they, the bore is a steel sleeve. The thing is that the piston's aluminum and the sleeve is steel, so they expand and contract at different rates. And when you're running an old saw like this, the exhaust port area is hotter than anywhere else, obviously. But what happens is that the clearance between the exhaust port and the piston opens up as it gets hot, because it's hotter than it is on the other side of the piston. And so that's why you need the thick oils, like the 30 and 40 weight to fill in the void there and keep them lubricated. Now if you're using full synthetics, and I'm, this is information I got from two chemical engineers, one that worked for Amsoil and one that worked for Pennzoil, so I'm just repeating what they told me. But they said that you shouldn't use them in the old equipment, and the two-stroke equipment and stuff, and the reason for it is that the molecules of the oil are man-made and they're all the same size. With mineral oil, it's all kinds of different sizes. And so, if you have an old saw like this and it's working hard, the exhaust port opens up, the molecules of the lubricant are just going to blow by the rings and it's not going to lubricate the piston, you're going to have a seizure. And so, the thing that backs this up though is that a, friend, a couple of friends of mine were professional saw mechanics and when the synthetic oils come in, they were flooded with top end rebuilds on all brands of saws because they just didn't work. And so, you know, the new saws, the piston and the cylinder, expand and contract at the same rate. And so, there again, they have tight tolerances and the oil that they use is adequate to lubricate them. I'd never run them up 50 to 1. But that's a mistake, but in my point of view, anyway. But, anyway, that's what they told me. And, you know, but another buddy of mine who was a motorcycle mechanic, owned a shop, actually dirt bike shop and stuff, he said the exact same thing. He said, you know, partial synthetic. And The thing that was funny is that these friends of mine had owned bike shops for a while and then they ended up with a Yamaha dealership. And, you know, they raced the latest Yamaha YZs and whatnot like that. But guess what oil I used? Bardol VBA. Everybody in the shop used it exclusively. They didn't use any of the Yamaha brand oils or anything else. So. Like I say, I'm just telling you what I've been told, and yeah, my saws last forever, so must be working. Well, I'm just going to briefly talk about what I would recommend for your saws. Real early saws like this, that use 10 to 16, a 20 to 1. I do use a 20 to 1. And if your saw is a little later, like a mid 70s or late 60s home lights or something like that. They recommended 32 to 1. That's pretty good for most any old saw, as long as it's uh, you know has roller bearings and needle bearings on the crank and connecting rod. And if you're just occasional user and cut a little bit of firewood and stuff like that with a home light or a you know McCulloch 610 or something like that, 40 to 1's more than adequate. But uh, there again, use the right type of oil. So and make sure you watch that video from Hot Saws 101. Okay, well, I know you're all wondering, since you can't buy any of these old oils anymore, what do I use in my outboard motors and everything except for the chainsaws? Well, there's two of them I use. One of them is Yamalube, and there's several different types of it. This is a partial synthetic, not the full synthetic. I don't, there again, I don't recommend full synthetics on old two-stroke motors. And the other one is Golden Spectro. 
and this is the closest thing to Bardell VBA I've ever found. But um, it really is excellent. But the drawback to this one and some of the other brands like this, or the expense of them, this stuff is really expensive. So this isn't very expensive here. But anyway, let's just talk a little bit about modern oils, two-stroke oils. Now, if you have modern chainsaws, you know, there's a lot of different choices there, and I'm not going to tell you which ones I recommend. I can tell you the two that I don't recommend, and it's steel oil and husky oil. And the reason for that is they build a lot of ash, and ash is just as destructive to a chainsaw or whatever blower, trimmer, as carbon is. So the trick to running those oils, you need to run the saw or the trimmer or whatever wide open for them to run clean. If you run them at partial throttle, they plug up just like carbon but it's ash and it'll score the piston and you know quite a few of the professional loggers that I've known over the years they they won't use it, either one of them there's a lot of videos on YouTube talking about why not to use them also so I'll just leave it at that but I wanted to talk about the cost of this stuff you know like if you have a modern still and you go down and you know, have these little 2.6 ounce bottles and so it makes it handy because it's exactly the amount you want to run at 50 to 1 for a gallon of fuel. And uh, so I broke it down and how much it is. So the steel oil, the Ultra, the top of the line stuff, is $1.60 an ounce. And so if you buy a gallon of it, it's $205, which is silly. And then still HP, high performance, I guess, supposed to be. It's a dollar six an ounce on sale, so that's 135 a gallon. And now with the Yamalube here, which doesn't build the ash and stuff like that, it's only 20 cents an ounce, so it's 34 dollars a gallon. Now the Golden Spectral like this, that's 75 cents an ounce, and so a gallon of that's 126 dollars. And the Husky XP oil, same, 75 cents. Now other oils that I had used in the past, um, some old motorcycles I had, two-stroke ones, I used Valvoline in them, and uh, way back it was 40 weight and they worked fine, but they changed the formula to match the new outboard standards, the TCW 1, 2, and 3. It was so thin the bikes were trying to seize, it was no good. And another one, that uh, Supertech from Walmart, that's $24 a gallon. I don't know who makes it, but some people said they've used it and had good luck with it. But the thing that I would recommend if you have a new saw is to look up a video from a guy that's called Hot Saws 101. And it's November 24th, 2017. And he did a study of all the modern oils. And most of the top brand names and stuff failed miserably. And he's a professional cutter and builds hot saws, so he knows what he's doing. But I'd recommend that video. So anyway, like I say, if you're just doing plinking around, run your old XL12 or something like that, you know, they don't run that hard. They run at 6,000, so they don't get that hot. The Amalube would be excellent for that. Uh, the McCullough's and stuff, if I run out of VBA, I'll be using this. Uh, there again, has a really high film strength and burns really clean. One thing, that, uh, too, that was kind of interesting years ago, a friend of mine who used to race motorcycles, uh, road racing, he had a Boltaco Spanish bike. It was called a TSS. It was specifically made at the factory for road racing. And the pistons they used in them were low quality and stuff, and they were real seizure prone, so he used to use uh, bean oil, castor bean oil in it. And well, they finally found a source, somebody started making decent pistons for him, so they put that out and he started using VBA in it. He never had a seizure, and the bike was 10 miles an hour faster than it was with the bean oil because it burnt so clean. So, just little interesting anecdotes on this stuff. So, anyway, there's what you have, so hope that helps. See you on the next video.